hello friends let's begin with the new reagent which is having a specific application in organic chemistry and the name of reagent is a dicyclohexyl carbodiamide it is also known as a dcc in a short form now this dicyclohexyl carbodiamide is used as a powerful dehydrating agent it means that it causes the dehydration of a reactants that is the removal of water molecule from the reactant so in this lecture we will discuss the preparation of a dcc and the applications of dcc and in application we will see the mechanism of the application in which there is a conversion of acids into the ester when the acids are treated with the alcohol they gives the ester that application we will see in a detail along with the mechanism now come towards this dicyclohexyl carbodiamide this dicyclohexyl carbodiamide involves a uh, two cyclohexyl rings and there is a presence of carbodiamide group so the carbodiamide group i will write n double bond c which is attached to the another nitrogen and on both side there is a presence of a cyclohexyl ring so i will write here a cyclohexyl ring in this way we get the structure of dicyclohexyl carbodiamide that is dcc and instead of cyclohexyl we will write a c6h11 n double bond c double bond n again c6h11 this dcc is having a melting point that is a 34 degree celsius so it is in a semi solid state or it is called as a waxy solid and under standard condition it is having a sweet odor that is sweet smell now this dcc it is insoluble in a water but it is a uh, soluble in organic solvents that is a thf as well as aceto nitrile that is ch3cn and thf means tetrahydrofuran though it is insoluble in water it is moisture sensitive and it is hygroscopic in a nature with this introduction of dcc let's go to the preparation of a dcc in the preparation we will see the three methods from which we can prepare a dicyclohexyl carbodiamide before starting with the actual preparation of dcc i will write here once again the structure of a dcc and there is a presence of two cyclohexyl rings now along with this i will write a structure of urea that is nh2c double bond o nh2 and here i will write the structure of thiourea nh2c double bond s nh2 now what i am going to do i will change this nh2 group by a cyclohexyl ring here that is i will put one cyclohexyl ring on this side and one cyclohexyl ring on this side then what is happening here there is a nh then c double bond o then nh then here there is a presence of cyclohexyl ring the hydrogen is replaced by a cyclohexyl ring then we get this type of urea that is dicyclohexyl urea now what is the difference between this dcc and this dicyclohexyl urea that is dcu the difference is very much clear here there is a presence of hydrogen hydrogen and oxygen that is two hydrogen and one oxygen which are absent in this structure and if i carried out the dehydration of this dcu then we get the dcc so first reactant is the dicyclohexyl urea 
and its dehydration it will give a DCC. So this is the simplest method. Now let us consider the second example that is thiourea. Once again I will replace the hydrogen by cyclohexyl ring. Then here we get C double bond S yes, then NH cyclohexyl ring. Now compare the structure of this di cyclohexyl thiourea and the DCC. Here there is a presence of two hydrogen and yes. And if I replace or if I remove this two hydrogen and sulfur from this reactant, then it is ultimately converted into the DCC. So dicyclohexyl thiourea upon removal of EH2S going to convert into DCC. So by using simply substituted ureas and substituted thiureas we can achieve the formation of a uh, dicyclohexyl carbodiamide these are the two methods and in the third method instead of using thiurea and urea we have to use a uh, isocyanate that is n double bond c double bond o and it is attached with a cyclohexyl ring. So we will start with the first method that is from a dicyclohexyl urea. The first method is nothing but the dehydration of dicyclohexyl urea in presence of paratolium sulfonyl chloride and hot pyridine. So I will write the structure of a dicyclohexyl urea. It is also called as a N N dash dicyclohexyl urea. Is N N dash dicyclo Exil urea when it is treated with a uh, paratolium sulfonyl chloride. I will write the structure of paratolium sulfonyl chloride. This is the benzene ring attached to the CH3. Then there is a presence of S yes, double bond O, S yes, double bond O Cl. It is paratolium sulfonyl chloride. It is also called as a PTSL. Then in presence of hot pyridine then what is happening here there is a dehydration of this dicyclohexyl urea occurs the hydrogen from the nitrogens and this oxygen they are eliminated and we get here a DCC that is dicyclohexyl carbodiimide plus a water here DCC. The second method involves the oxidation of N N dash dicyclohexyl uh, thiourea in presence of mercury oxide that is Hg2O. In presence of Hg2O, this dicyclohexyl thiourea undergoes oxidation and in this oxidation there is a, a removal of EH2S from the structure of thiourea and this is going to convert into the DCC. So I will write the reaction here. Just I have to put two cyclohexyl rings which are attached to the NH C double bond S NH. So this is the thio area and I will write here only short form dicyclohexyl thio urea in presence of mercury oxide minus H2S. Here we get a DCC N double bond C double bond N then a cyclohexyl ring. It is a DCC.
In the third method, from cyclohexyl isocyanate, we can prepare the dicyclohexyl carbodimide when it is treated with the trialkyl phosphine oxide. In the first step, we obtain the intermediate, and the intermediate is again reacted with the cyclohexyl isocyanate. Then we get a DCC as a product. So I will write the reaction in which there is a presence of cyclohexyl isocyanate N double bond C double bond O. Now, if you compare this structure with the DCC, it is clear that here up to here we have a same part as that of the DCC, but this oxygen must be replaced by a cyclohexyl ring and nitrogen. For that purpose, we have to react this isocyanate with trialkyl phosphine oxide that is R3P double bond O trialkyl phosphine oxide. Then it is giving an intermediate which is nothing but N double bond here PR3. It is the intermediate plus a CO2. So this PR3 group that is trialkyl phosphine is going to attach with this nitrogen and this CO group and this oxygen is eliminated as a CO2. It is the intermediate. Then in the next step, this intermediate again undergo a reaction with cyclohexyl isocyanide. So I will write here a cyclohexyl isocyanide that is N double bond C double bond O. And now what happens? This trialkyl phosphine is going to combine with the oxygen to form trialkyl phosphine oxide and the remaining group which is nitrogen and cyclohexyl is going to attach with this carbon. So we get here a nitrogen then carbon and a double bond and this group I will write here. So here nitrogen and again a second cyclohexyl ring whereas we get R3P double bond that is triphenyl or trialkyl phosphine oxide and or DCC. In this way by using simplest processes we can prepare our dicyclohexyl carbodimide and we can use this DCC as a dehydrating agent. In the application we will see the first application that is a synthesis of ester. The synthesis of ester it can be carried out by using the reaction of carboxylic acid and ester in presence of DCC. For that purpose I will write the general reaction RC double bond OOH that is carboxylic acid plus R dash OH that is alcohol when they treated in presence of a DCC there is a dehydration and we get RCO o R dash plus H2 here we are getting a ester the mechanism of formation of ester involves the attack of DCC on the carboxylic acid in which there is a abstraction of the hydrogen from the carboxylic acid by a DCC happens in a first step. So I will write here carboxylic acid plus a DCC but I will write the DCC like this C double bond N and I will put here a C6H11 that is cyclohexyl ring. In the first step the nitrogen which is having a lone pair abstract this hydrogen and the electron from this bond shift on this oxygen. Oxygen already has a two lone pairs. So here we are getting a carboxylate ion which is a resonance stabilized one. 
plus your NH then uh, C6H11 double bond carbon double bond nitrogen again cyclohexyl that is C6H11 nitrogen possesses a positive charge now this carboxylate ion is resonance stabilized therefore it may attack from this oxygen or this oxygen on this carbon so I will write a simple attack of this oxygen on the carbon now the bond between this NH group and the carbon is broken down and which neutralize the positive charge on the nitrogen so here we are getting our COO then a C which is attached to the nitrogen then C6H11 again here double bond nitrogen C6H11 now in the third step what happens the alcohol that is R dash OH it attacks on the carbonyl carbon when it attacks on the carbonyl carbon the electron from this carbon double bond oxygen shifts on this oxygen and this oxygen becomes negatively charged then this electron came back or negative charge came back with the removal of this or breaking of this carbon oxygen bond so I will write here directly there is a breaking of this carbon and oxygen bond and when it happens the electron from this bond they are shifted on the oxygen and when oxygen possesses negative charge it will shift the electron to this bond so I will directly write here the shifting of the electron like this then the carbon double bond nitrogen is broken down and the nitrogen becomes negatively charged and this nitrogen abstract the hydrogen and therefore we are getting here R C double bond O then O here R dash this oxygen is attached with the hydrogen and having positive charge plus C double bond O then NH C6 H11 here uh, nitrogen having negative charge then C6 H11 it abstract this hydrogen and it will donate the electron to the oxygen and we get RCO O R dash plus there is a formation of this type of compound C double bond O here NH here NH then C6 H11 and here there is a C6 H11 so we are getting here dicyclohexyl urea in this way the synthesis of ester occurs and acid and alcohols they are converted into the corresponding ester in presence of dicyclohexyl carbodiamine as a dehydrating agent application is a synthesis of ether in which there is also dehydration occurs and the example of synthesis of ether is I will take a phenol that is a C6H5OH plus another that is alcohol that is ROH this phenols and alcohols when they treated with each other in presence of a DCC there is a dehydration occurs which causes the formation of aryl ethers that is OR plus H2 once again this reaction occurs through same type of mechanism which we have seen in the synthesis of ester and finally we are getting a aryl ethers here so aliphatic ethers as well as aromatic ethers can be prepared by using the DCC as a dehydrating agent third application is the synthesis of amide the synthesis of amide is carried out 
by the reaction between a carboxylic acid that is RCOOH and amine that is R dash here I will write NH2 primary amine in presence of DCC once again there is a dehydration and we are getting the product that is RCO here NH R dash that is amine so amine and acid going to combine in presence of DCC to use amide plus water in this reaction also there is a dehydration and similar mechanism as that of the synthesis of ester the fourth application is the synthesis of anhydride Anhydrides are obtained when the two molecules of carboxylic acids they react with each other in presence of dehydrating agent. So I will write here RCOOH plus RCOOH. Here we get RCO then OCOR plus H2 that is anhydrides are obtained by the reaction of two molecules of acids. In addition to this, a diacyl peroxide can be prepared from the two molecules of acids and hydrogen peroxide. So we will see the synthesis of diacyl peroxide. In the diacyl peroxide what happens the two molecules of carboxylic acid are COOH and one molecule of H2O2 that is I will write the way of structure of H2O2 like this OH single bond OH plus a second molecule of carboxylic acid that is RCOOH and a DCC here this hydrogen and this OH group that combine with each other then this hydrogen and the OH group from this side they are going to combine with each other and there is an elimination of two water molecules and the remaining fractions or remaining fragments they are joined together so we get RCOO CO this is nothing but a diacyl peroxide and this diacyl peroxide they are often used in the free radical reactions so this is the acyl group this is the acyl group and this is the peroxide group in this way anhydrides diacyl peroxide esters ethers amides they can be prepared by using dcc and DCC here acts as a mild dehydrating agent. So with this we will wind up this lecture and we will stop here. Thank you for watching the reagent that is dicyclohexyl carbodiamide. Name is longer but the applications are simple ones.